So the last video on solving equations was getting a little long, so I thought I would start a new one uh, specifically for applications of solving equations. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look and see. Uh, first of all, let's do. I want to look at a technique for solving um, fancy equations uh, that have more stuff going on. Uh, take a look at this one. Uh, Um, here's a, an equation with lots of fractions, and I'd like you to be able to deal with equations like this just as easily as equations without fractions. So I'm going to introduce you to a little trick. It's called fraction busting. Now, in order to do fraction busting, you need to know what a least common denominator is, and you need to know how to find it. And again, if you need extra help on that, that's sort of a, a, a pre-algebra uh, issue. Um, so it, it, please see me, uh, ask me in class, and I can explain it to you. Um, or outside of class, we can do some practice, and I can really show you how, the, how to find the least common denominator. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look and see um, how to do it here. In this case, if I look at the denominators of all the fractions, there is a least common denominator that is obvious um, right now, and that's going to be 16. Now, the least common denominator is not always one of the denominators. Sometimes you got to multiply some of the denominators together. But in this case, um, all of the denominators, uh, I could multiply each one of these fractions by something in the denominator and get 16. So uh, let's take a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that least common denominator to do something that I call fraction busting. And fraction busting is a technique that may help you if you have to solve equations that have lots of fractions in them. So what we'll do is we'll multiply the left hand side of the equation by the least common denominator, 16, and we'll multiply the right side of the equation by the least common denominator, 16. And when we do this, we're going to have to distribute here and here. And over here, we also have to distribute to both um, terms. Uh, the, the left hand side was a binomial, just one term plus another, and the right hand side was a binomial, one term minus another. Um, so we're distributing the 16 to both terms in the binomial. Okay, when we do this, um, the 16 cancels with the 8, and that gets me 2 times 3, or 6x. Now, I didn't cancel the 16 because that 16 is still there when I have to go and distribute it over here. So it's not as though the 16 goes away when I cancel it. I'm allowed to multiply the 16 times both the 3 8 x and the 3 16 um, So this will be plus 3 over 16 times 16. Well, again, the 16 cancels with the 16, and I get 3. And then that's equal to um, 16 times 3 over 4. The 4 cancels with the 16, so that gets me 4 times 3. That's 12x. And then again, I can multiply the 16 times the 1 half. Um, minus 1 half times 16 is minus 8. Now, that's what I call fraction busting. If you think you like this technique, let me know, and I can show you more in class, especially if we have practice problems to work on. Um, let me go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and finish this guy real quick. Um, I'll subtract 6x from both sides, and when I do, I get 6x over here. And then I'm going to add 8 to both sides, and that gets me 11 over there. And then I'm going to use the symmetric property of equality that we talked about earlier uh, in the other uh, video on e equations. And uh, we'll just switch sides, 6x and 11. And then I will use the uh, division property of equality that says, hey, if I divide an equation uh, by the same number on both sides, perfectly legal, due to the division property of equality. And in this case, the result that I get is x equals 11 sixths. Now, many times I'll be perfectly happy with that answer, but it'd be nice if you knew how to make this into a mixed fraction. And in our case, that gets us, uh, uh, I believe, 1 and 5 sixths. Um, 6 times 1, that's 6, plus 5, that's 11 over 6. Um, and again, I think I showed you before, I reminded you, um, 11 divided by 6 goes in there one time, and that gets me 6 there, minus 5, 1 and 5 over 6, 1 and 5 sixths.
All right, so that's how we solve a, a, a fractional equation using fraction busting. Hopefully that helps you. A similar technique can be used if you have equations with decimals. You can multiply through by 10 or 100 or 1,000, and I recommend that you experiment with that. Um, again, maybe we can try it in class. This equation is an example of one of my most fun things that uh, one it's I think it's just a very fun equation. Um, it's the equation that lets you convert from Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit temperature. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like we have a we, this this is the only thing we have in front of us. We are told the Fahrenheit temperature and we desperately want to know the Celsius temperature. So uh, put yourself in this scenario, okay? Uh, ma imagine along with me. Now, the trick is, is we got to get the C by itself. In other words, we need to isolate the C. Now, to many of us, that's a, a scary proposition because there's a letter over here. It's not all numbers. Well, it turns out we can do all the same things um, when we solve an equation, whether there's letters or numbers or whatever. We're still allowed to use all the same techniques. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the subtraction property of equality and I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides of the equal sign. Again, I'm going to remind you that this uh, equal sign um, is sort of our dividing line for this equation. And when we say both sides or do something to both sides, we mean both sides of the equal sign. So um, we end up now, after doing that, we end up getting um, F minus 32 on the left side of the equal sign. And on the right side, we just have 9 fifths C and those two guys are equal. Now the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get rid of this 9 over 5 times er, that's in front of the C. We want to isolate the C. Now the way that we do that there's a couple of things you could do. You could multiply both sides of the equation times 5 and then divide both sides of the equation by 9. Perfectly legitimate. But I, I'm, I want to give you guys a little something extra for your money here. So I'm going to show you a technique we're going to use. It's, uh, it, we're going to clear out this fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. Um, so let's take a look. So I'm going to multiply the entire right side of the equation by the reciprocal of 9 over 5. That's 5 over 9 and then I'll multiply the entire left side. Notice I have to use parentheses here because I'm multiplying the entire left side times 5 over 9. This is legal because I am multiplying both sides by the same thing. This is known as the multiplication property of equality. So multiplication property of equality makes that legal. Again if I ask you to justify um, why you're doing what you're doing It'd be nice if you knew, well, there's actually a property that says it's legal. I can multiply both sides of an equation as long as it's by the same thing. And also we might want to make note that up here we use the subtraction property of equality in order to uh, subtract off that 32 from both sides. Yay. Okay. So let's get back to business here. So if uh, so, on the right hand side, um, I'm going to do a, a couple of steps. Just uh, maybe I'll write a couple things and then I'll erase, um, uh, or maybe I'll just leave it. The uh, first of all, I'm going to use the commutative property of multiplication to rewrite this as five ninths times nine fifths. C. You don't normally have to write this step, but I want you to see what, why it works the way it does. The next thing I'm going to do is use the associative property of multiplication to just throw away the parentheses. Because when I have things that are multiplied together, I am allowed to, uh, if they're all multiplied, I'm allowed to just regroup them in any way I like, including throw away the parentheses. Some of you are thinking maybe distribute the 5 ninths to the 9 fifths into the C, but there is no distribute because there's no addition going on inside this parentheses. So when I have 5 over 9 times 9 over 5, I am allowed to cancel um, this 9 and this 9. Really what that means is 9 divided by 9 is just 1 here and 1 there. And, uh, and then I'm allowed to cancel this 5 and this 5, and that gets me a 1 there and a 1 there. And all those 1s multiply together to get 1. So in the end, what I'm left with is just C. So I have C left over here. 
and then on the left side I still have 5 ninths f minus 32 and if I really wanted to I could go ahead and distribute but I don't have to it's a perfectly legitimate result to leave it as 5 ninths times f minus 32 and, and in fact many times when you see this formula you'll see c equals 5 ninths times f minus 32 um, we will do one last thing. We will use the symmetric property of equality to rearrange uh, C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. And what I did here is I accomplished the result that I was striving for, and that result was to solve um, for C. In other words, to isolate the variable C, even though there was an F there. Now, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you, um, but here's what I'd like you to try on your own. And again, if you, if you don't get it or if you have questions, you can talk to me later. Um, but let's try this. So here's your challenge. What I'd like you to try is solve this equation for f. Um, now, it's going to require some slightly different techniques than what we just used, but similar. And I'm curious to see if you can do it. Again, if you cannot, talk to me later or maybe we'll try it uh, one day in class together. It's a good challenge. See what you can do. The good news is you kind of know what the answer is. The answer um, should look quite a bit like uh, what we just did. Um, it should look like this, right? So you kind of know what you're shooting for there. Um, okay, let's try one last thing. All right, let's have one last little challenge regarding solving equations um, as an application. Um, and, uh, and this will be uh, one way to get you um, in the mindset of solving word problems. So you have iPads cost $399 and Kindles cost $79 each. Just, just work with me on this, okay? You have a budget of $3,259 Ooh, lucky you. You you have money. Um, just to spend on gifts? Anyways, you know you want to buy five iPads. So, uh, you need to write an equation to explain how many Kindles you can afford. So, let's take a look and see where... Oh, uh, I think there's a little extra as well. So, this is something that I would like you to work on, and uh, in class we can talk about how to get this done. Um, but there's two things that I'd like you to try. I'd like you to try to write an equation that represents this situation, and, uh, and then uh, as a secondary thing, uh, I'd like you to think about and explain how you might answer this without an equation. Anyways, come prepared to talk about this stuff, and that's that. Uh, I, so give it a, actually, go, you need to right now uh, pause the video, go through the motions of writing the equation if you can, think about it. One thing that I really strongly recommend is that you actually take some time and struggle with this problem. Don't throw your hands in the air. Don't give up so easily. Read through it several times. Write down the information you have. Write down what you're looking for. And anything that you don't know, you might want to consider calling it the variable. Maybe even call it x. Um, and then try to rearrange the numbers and the variables or variable in the equation so that uh, it matches up with this situation. Um, I bet you can do it. Just give it a try. You just need to be persistent. Don't give up. Um, uh, and then explaining how you might answer this without an equation. If you want, you can try that first. Um, the bottom line is I would like it if you uh, began to gain confidence in yourself that you can solve complicated problems. Um, and I don't care whether you do it by equation or without an equation. Um, I think right now it would be a good idea to try struggling with this to see if you can get it on your own. I believe in you. Make it happen. You can do it.